Okay, sports fans. Uh, not quite sure how this is going to turn out, but uh, it's an interesting shot of a bonnet grill because we are, as the saying goes, under the keel of the land yacht. Now, what I'm trying to uh, just go through here in this particular video, as we can see, everything's covered in oil and nastiness here. Um, mostly due to the yacht's dependency on uh, internal combustion. Uh, so we're going to be solving that problem for it. Anyhow, uh, what I'm trying to show here is basically the design of our E39 oil sump and bell housing. So what we have is we have our five-speed gearbox here and up here we have our clutch slave cylinder and the hydraulic feed to it and over here we have a stupid exhaust bracket and if we come down here we can see where the bell housing uh, meets with the engine crankcase now there's a big great nasty oil sump here as you can see in some kind of oil level sensor covered in goo and up here we have a serious piece of uh, German steel and then in front of that we have the steering rack and uh, some of the associated hydraulic lines in there. Now <coughs> the distance from the my finger in there this front of the steering rack to the face of the bell housing is about 250 millimeters and the sump only goes back this far as far as our piece of cross member material here so our big motor goes from the bell housing interface here and it goes all the way up to 440 millimeters to the commutator end of the motor um, which kind of puts it somewhere just in front of the uh, steering rack here so that gives us a potential problem that the motor is going to bang off the steering rack when we go to install our new drivetrain. Now I did a little bit of investigation on this on a previous day but had a chance this evening and uh, decided to put the old bow area into dry dock and uh, see, just, ju just get a better look at what's going on. So I'm going to traverse backwards over our gearbox we have another moronic exhaust bracket and we're going back here to the gearbox cross beam now if we have a look these bolts see they're actually slotted and I've removed one bolt from the cross beam here now we've also got another drill position here and I've just screwed that bolt into it just to ensure that it was the right fit which I think it is um, so we have another drilling in there should be able to see it just under the heat shield um, in the middle of the shot there now so we have drillings on both sides uh, third drill hole basically on each side now as best as I could discern purpose of that extra drilling to allow this cross beam uh, to move backwards this way so it can be bolted in on this bolt hole here and this bolt hole here as opposed to the two that it's uh, currently on. Now this picks me up well over a hundred millimeters of backwards travel on my gearbox. So you might say to me well that's a great idea Damien but uh, what are you going to do about the drive shaft? So, uh, as we know, the E39 could be supplied in both a manual and automatic gearbox variant. And the um, automatic gearbox, I'm going to take a guess, fits on these uh, bolt connections here because it is a longer unit physically uh, than the manual. So, if I can extricate myself from under the yacht 
uh, and this wonderful creeper that I have picks up every bit of dirt on the planet. And if we go in here, oh, I'm too old for crawling under cars. Yeah, upon the rack here, hopefully see we have a drive shaft. And that particular drive shaft uh, is from the automatic E39. And I'm kind of hoping that it's uh, shorter. And so we'll couple up with our gearbox, allowing this end of the box here to move back 100 mil thus allowing the uh, commutator end of the motor to move back towards the rear of the car by 100 mil thus finally allowing it to clear the steering rack which will be ultimately down here somewhere so that's the grand strategy and um, so I'm hoping we can see we're starting in on the air intake band for the motor here, we've got uh, some nice stainless steel clamped up. Got some. Got. I'm going to be going at two 50 millimeter stainless intakes here. We'll have a Y piece splitting the um, output from the excess turbos blower. Have a piece of material going to be made to cap this off, and also carry my RPM sender in here. Got another band that I haven't quite finished. That's going to be. Uh, going around the drive end and it'll have a outlets for to let the exhaust air back out. So a little bit of progress there on the drivetrain. On the car itself, um, last weekend kind of got stuck in, stripped out the air conditioning uh, pump and tied off the pipes. Stripped out the entire cooling system, radiator, hoses, filler bottle, all that kind of thing. I can still start and run the engine because uh, I need to be able to move the car around. Also taken out the airbox, air cleaner, pipes, ducting, air mass meter, all that stuff's gone. So that allowed me then to be able to measure up uh, the distances between the front cross beams uh, to sent to my fabricator guys to get the front battery box made so that's hopefully going to be done within the next week um, we'll be getting very near to taking the old fossil burner out and replacing it with the uh, magnetic drive system so uh, that is the plan currently and the progress report on, on the old uh, yacht so uh, I think we're bringing very close to the engine pull day. Um, got some more motor controller components coming in. Got some more Azure dynamic stuff uh, winging its way. It's amazing how much of that stuff seems to be flying around out there. So uh, I've managed to get a slice of some of the more mundane components which should help with the controller build. And uh, yeah, we can get this thing out, and uh, that's the plan, folks, so stay tuned.